Good afternoon to all the sons and daughters of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, spiritual and physical. And my, and my name is Brother Runny, and this is my reader, Brother Rashad. And it is always an honor to be able to stand before you on the Lord's Sabbath day. In Jesus' name. And today's title, brothers and sisters, is Love. Love, the word and commandment from the beginning. And to all my scholars out there, this is a real simple lesson. But it's also a great reminder. Because the book tells us that love is the fulfilling of the law. But this love we're talking about is not the love that the world has taught us. It's not a fuzzy feeling and a, and a cliche statement. Love is doing right by God and right by your neighbor. And what that is is to love God with all your heart and all your mind and all your might and to love your neighbor as yourself. And in this lesson, we're going to see that this word is love and that this commandment is love. And we're just going to dissect this as we go. Like I said, I'm not going to be uh, before you too long running my mouth. We're going to let the Bible speak. Amen. Amen. So uh, let's, let's pick it up at John 1. We're going to start this off, y'all. <laughs> at John chapter 1. Because again, the title is love. The word and commandment from the beginning. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to dissect this word, and we're going to dissect these commandments. And we're going to see that they always been around. John 1 and 1. And when you get there, my brother, go ahead. In the beginning was the word. Uh-huh. In the beginning was the word. Go ahead. And the word was with God. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And the word was God. So we see that the word was God. This is none other than Jesus who was the spokesman of the Father before he came in the flesh. But go ahead. The same was in the beginning with God. The same was in the beginning with God. Go ahead. All things were made by him. All things were made by who? Him. The, the Word. The Word that was with God in the beginning. He did all the creating. He did all the labor. Go ahead. And without him was not anything. And without the Word was not anything made that was made. Uh, is that the end of it? Skip down to verse 10. He was in the world. He was in the world. Go ahead. And the world was made by him. And the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. And the world knew him not. But everybody say they love the Lord. But the world don't know him according to this. But go ahead. He came unto his own. He and his, and his own received him not. He came into his own. And who was his own, brothers and sisters? Israel. He came into his own. And his own received him not. Go ahead. But as many as received him, but as many as received him, go ahead, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. And if we receive him, we have had the same power to become the sons of God and the sons of God with power. That's what this word of God is all about. This is our salvation. And what will we be if we are salvaged? You never ask that question. But we got lessons to show you that man was created to become God. But go ahead, bro. Even uh, go ahead. Even to them that believe on his name. Even to them that believe on his name. And what name is given unto heaven whereby men must be saved? Jesus. Skip down to verse 14. And the word was made flesh. Oh, and the word was made flesh. So this word that was God in the beginning has always been around, and then he was made flesh. So this show you, learning some way on the learning some, that Jesus didn't come out of Mary. He came through Mary. He the one created everything. And then picked him a people that he wanted to come through to be this sin offering for mankind. But go ahead. And dwelt among us. Uh-huh. And we beheld his glory. Uh-huh. The glory as of the only begotten the of the Father. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Go ahead. Full of grace and truth. All right. Full of grace and truth. Moving right along because we're going to take a look at this word made flesh and look at his love toward us. Let's go to Psalms 40. Psalms chapter 40 and verse 6, because I just want to show you this word that was made flesh. Psalms 40, if I can get there, and verse 6. Psalms 40 and verse 6. When you get there, my brother, go ahead. 
Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire because, y'all, this was a law added because of sin. See, the royal law has always been, a, been around. And how we know that is when Cain killed his brother Abel. If it, if it wasn't against God's law or if it wasn't wrong, then he would have told the truth to the Lord. He wouldn't have lied about it and got smart with the Lord. Am I my brother's keeper? He would have just told him, yeah, I killed him. I hid him over there in the bush. But he didn't do that because the law has always been here. And so this law, this law of animal sacrifices was the law that said if you sin, meaning if you broke God's law because sin is the transgression law, then this law said that you had to kill this bull or, or this goat to uh, offer him sacrifice for your sin but the animals didn't do anything wrong man got us in trouble so man had to get us out of trouble and ain't seeing ain't nobody on this earth clean enough no not one man since adam is clean enough to do this the lord had to come and do it himself but go ahead mine ears has thou opened burnt offering and sin offering has thou not required then said i lo i come in the volume of the book. Oh, then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. Go ahead. It is written of me. And we know this same David here. We, we know by, the, by the, uh, 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 the book of Samuel, 23rd uh, Samuel, that, hey, he said the Lord spoke by him. David told you that. But go and read on your own time. Go ahead, my brother. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yeah, thy law is within my heart. Oh, so this guy said, lo, I come in the volume of the book. And he said, it's written of me. And he said, I delight to do thy will. Oh, my God, thy law is within my heart. And this is a conversation between uh, who is now called, called a son and the father. He said, thy law is within my heart. Because he came, he's, the father sent him and he spoke whatever his father commanded him to speak. But let's move right along. Because he said... I come in the volume of the book, and we're going to look at the New Testament. Go to Hebrews 10. Because, see, this is how we read the Bible to get understanding, brothers and sisters. You know, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, there is no light in them. And he said, line upon line, precept upon precept. That's whom he's going to make to understand doctrine and teach knowledge. So Hebrews 10, and we're going to pick it up at verse 5. Hebrews 10 and 5. When you get there, my brother, go ahead. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice, sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not. Now, now we know where he said that at. He said that by the mouth of his pro uh, prophet King David, didn't he? Go ahead. But a body hast thou prepared me. Oh, he said, but a body hast thou prepared me. So that's how we know he came in the volume of the book. This is the word made flesh. Go ahead. In burnt, in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin. Thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. Uh-huh. Skip down. And who is this talking about? Skip down to verse 10. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Oh, so this is the word that was made flesh and that was sacrificed for us once for all. Jesus ain't going to come and die for your sins again. Because once we come into the knowledge of the truth of who the Lord is and what he tell us to do, then, hey, we are to walk in newness of life, ain't it? We are to go like he, like after he kept the woman from getting stoned because the Sadducees and Pharisees brought false judgment on them. And after he asked them where they condemned us at, he told them what? Go and sin no more. Because, hey, once you realize you're doing wrong, you need to repent. And if you truly repent, you are not going to do those same things again. You are going to do your best to walk in newness of life in the fear of the Lord, in the love and fear of the Lord. But go, uh, let's move right along. Doing too much talking again. Stop talking so much, Brother Shaw. <laughs> let's move right along. Let's go to Isaiah 53. Because he said, a body has thou prepared me. And he said he came in the volume of the book. And let's get some clarification on what this body that the Lord prepared him was for. Because this is all God's love towards us. He said the wages of sin is death. And he's not just talking about the first death, he's talking about the second death. But through 
Jesus being our payment, we have a way out. But you have to do something for you to be covered under that blood or be covered by his sacrifice. Isaiah 53, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. When you get there, my brother, go ahead. Who hath believed our report? Who hath believed our report? And he said he came into the world, and the world knew him not. So ain't nobody believed his report. Go ahead. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Because even Israel didn't believe him when he showed up. But go ahead. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. And didn't he tell Moses that? A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you, like unto, uh, like unto me in the midst of your brethren. Him shall ye hearken. He said he was going to raise him up before you. But go ahead. And as a root out of a dry ground, he have no form nor comeliness. And when, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. And he ain't come to win no beauty contest, ain't he? He came to be about his father's business. But go ahead. He is despised and rejected of men. Oh, I thought everybody loved the Lord. Not this guy. The one that gave himself up. The one that created us and then gave himself up. But go ahead. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs. Mm -hmm. Surely he hath borne our griefs. Go ahead. And carried our sorrows. Mm -hmm. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Smitten of God and afflicted. Go ahead. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Oh, he was wounded for our transgressions. And what is transgressions, brothers and sisters? Sin. Praise the Lord. Because sin is the transgression of the law. Go ahead. He was bruised for our iniquities. He was bruised for our iniquities. And what is iniquities? Sin. Go ahead. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. And with his stripes, we are healed. Go ahead. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. And we all have gone astray like sheep, brothers and sisters. All of us have gone astray. Ain't none of us fully have done everything that the Lord has told us to do. And even, come, even getting, after getting baptized, brothers and sisters, That's how many of us have gone astray? And not doing what does say the Lord. I ain't going to ask you to show me your hand. Because, hey, we have all been there. But uh, skip down to verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Oh, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. They took sweet counsel in it, him and the father. It pleased the Lord to bruise him. Go ahead. He hath put him to grief. Uh-huh. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for oh, sin. Oh, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. And learning way on the learning something. Didn't he say a body that has prepared me? So we know this soul is the body he's talking about. Because he said when he formed a man up out of the dust of the ground and breathed in his breath, uh, uh, nostrils the breath of life, he became a living soul. But if you take that breath away from man, what is he going to be? A dead soul. But go ahead. He shall see his seed. He shall see his seed. Go ahead. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. And yes, it will prosper in his hand. And uh, let's move right along because we're going to go to the New Testament and look at something that every, just pretty much everybody that knows something about the Lord, knows something about the Lord Jesus Christ, has heard this scripture. Let's go to John 3, 3 and verse 16. John chapter 3 and verse 16, because every, almost everybody has heard this scripture before. You even see billboards uh, around the city, for God so loved the world. But that don't mean God loved everybody, brothers and sisters. He made his love available to the world, but did the world love him back? <laughs> We're going to find out. We're going to let the book speak for us. But 3 and 16. And when you get there, my brother, go ahead. For God so loved the world. Yes, he did. Go ahead. That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, mm -hmm. but have everlasting life. And whosoever, this say whosoever, brothers and sisters, he ain't just come for Israel. He said, for God so loved the world. That's, I mean, that's simple. I don't have to elaborate on that. I don't have to interpret that, do it. For God so loved the world. They don't say God only loved one nation, one nationality of people, one group of people. He say he loved the world. Then he trying to include everybody in this sin, ain't it? That's simple. Go ahead. 
For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. Right. But that the world through him might be saved. Right, because the world is in condemnation already. The world fell in, in, into condemnation when, when, when Satan slew us in the garden. When he came, came to Eve. And, 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 and she gave a conversation to Adam. And we've, and, and we've been dying ever since, brothers and sisters. And that's when, death, that's when sin came in the world, and by sin, death. And so the Lord is removing this death sentence uh, uh, of the second death away from us if we will only believe. But if we don't believe, go ahead. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Hey, he's condemned already. He came to bring you out there condemnation. So if you ain't going to believe him, then you stuck there. Go ahead. Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Uh-huh. Go ahead. And this is the condemnation. That light is coming to the world. Ah, oh, and this is condemnation. That light is coming to the world. Go ahead. And men love darkness rather than light. Because their deeds were evil. And, and y'all know that's true. Men love darkness rather than light. Look at the entertainment. Look at the movies. Even I like movies. I like good, uh, what they call them, shoot em up, bang, bang movies. Y'all like to watch them <laughs> movies and stuff? That's, what, that's what's glorified in the world. Men love darkness. Flesh and blood love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. But let's move right along. And we're going to show you, we're going to learn something else on the way to learn something that this light is love. And Jesus is called the light of the world. And God is also called love. But let me not get too ahead of myself. Let's move right along. Let's go to John chapter 5 now. Because now we know this only begotten son that gave himself for us is none other than the word that was in the beginning with God and was also God and made flesh. John 5, and we're going to pick it up at 37. And when you get there, my brother, go ahead. And the Father himself, which have sent me. Oh, and the Father himself, which have sent me. Then we read that, and then it says, please, Lord, to bruise him. Go ahead. Have borne witness of me. Uh-huh. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. And you have never, never heard the Father's voice at any time or seen his shape. Because a lot of people like to try to tell you, that's the Father in the Old Testament. See, and then Jesus came, and he, and he changed everything in the New Testament. Not so. And we're going to go and look and see, ain't it? Because he said, he said, the Father himself which sent me have borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape. Uh, skip down. Uh, go ahead. Keep reading. And ye have not his word abiding in you. For whom he hath sent him ye believe not. Because if you believe on the Son, if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, then you're going to believe his word. You're going to believe the word of the Father because that's who he is. Go ahead. Search the scriptures. Uh-huh. Search the scriptures. And he talking, what scriptures is he talking about, brothers and sisters? From Genesis to Malachi. See, this is a real simple lesson to all my scholars out there, but it also is always a great reminder. Because if we love, if we have love, y'all, we won't do anything to dis disappoint God or our neighbor. This is the fulfilling of the law. But we're going to go into it and we're going to read all this. Go ahead. For in them ye think ye have eternal life. For in them ye think ye have eternal life. So he says, search the scriptures. For in them ye think ye have eternal life. Go ahead. And they are they which testify of me. So we know all the scriptures from Genesis to Malachi testify of Jesus. The, the, the disciples didn't have a New Testament when they was walking around teaching the people. They were teaching the people out the Old Testament the law. We can go and read that, that they taught people out of Moses and the law every Sabbath day. Wonder why I don't say every Sunday or first day of the week. Can't even find first day of the week in there. And don't, and don't try to show me where uh, Paul broke bread on the first day of the week. Because <laughs> I break bread every day if I can. <laughs> but we can read all the times where he kept the Sabbath day. And I can show you in, in first, first Corinthians 16 where he said, don't let it be no gathering concerning the collection of the saints. Don't let it be no gathering when I come to the church. So how Paul kept Sunday? But let's move right along. Let's skip down. I'm doing too much talking again. I told you, don't let me do all that talking. Go ahead. Yeah, skip down to 45. 
Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. Mm -hmm. There is one that accuseth you. Hey, don't, hey, Jesus said, don't think that I'm going to accuse you to the Father. I ain't accuse you of nothing. Go ahead. Even Moses, in whom ye trust. And see, he was talking to Israel right here. He said, and there is one that accuses you, even Moses, in whom you trust, because they, they say they believe the words of Moses. They believe the law. They keeping the law. But what did Jesus say to him? Go ahead. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me. Oh, so if you really believed Moses is real, then you would have believed me. And that's for my Hebrew brothers today. If you really believe Moses, if you really believe the Old Testament, if you really believe the law, then you would believe in Jesus because Moses wrote of him. He wrote about their prophet should come. He wrote about their star that should rise out of Jacob and deception in Israel. He wrote about all these things. He wrote about the, about the seed of the woman in Genesis. He wrote about all these things. This was all written about the Lord. But go ahead, 47. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? And that go for our so-called Christians. If you don't believe the writings of Moses, how are you going to believe the words of Jesus? How are you going to believe his words if you don't believe Moses? Because to the law and to the testimony, we need it all. He said he came in the volume of the book. But that's just like us. We just want a piece of Jesus, ain't it? We don't want all of them. We don't want all. We just like certain parts of them. But let's, uh, let's uh, move right along. Let's, let's, go and look at, let's go and look at who Moses wrote about. Because he said that you ain't seen God at any time. You ain't seen the Father at any time, nor heard his voice, nor seen his shape, right? But the books say he saw God, though. That, that the children of Israel saw God. So let's look at this God that they saw. Let's go to Exodus 24 and verse 1. Exodus 24 and verse 1. And when you get there, my brother, go ahead. And he said unto Moses, Come up unto the Lord, thou and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship ye afar off. So the Lord told him, Come up, but go uh, skip down to verse 9. Then went up Moses and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel. And what happened when they went up? Go ahead. And they saw the God of Israel. And they saw the God of Israel. But Jesus said that you have never seen the Father any time nor heard his voice. So who is this that they saw then? Jesus. Because Jesus can't lie. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And there ain't no lie of the truth. So he said, they saw the God of Israel. Go ahead. And there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of a sapphire stone. And as it were, the body of heaven in his clearness. Uh-huh. Go ahead. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Also, they saw God and did eat and drink. Oh, and they, they saw God and did eat and drink. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Moses, come up to me into the mount and be there. And I will give thee tables of stone and a law and commandments, which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. And when they went up into the, and when Moses went up into the mount, the Lord gave him two tables of stone, a law and commandments, which he wrote. So we know that this is Jesus who gave Moses these two tables of stone. Let's go and look at it. Let's go to uh, Exodus 31 now. Exodus 31 and 18. Because we're just going to look at this in detail, brothers and sisters, on the way to learning something. He gave him two tables, uh, a stone, his commandments, when he gave them to Moses. And he said he wrote them, right? Pick it up at 18, 31 and 18. Go ahead. And he gave unto Moses... When he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony, tables of stone, written with the finger of God. Oh, two tables of testimony, tables of stone, written with the finger of God. He wrote it himself, y'all. So how is it that the Lord, you know, 
wrote something in stone, etched it in stone. When, when somebody tell me it's set in stone, that means it's a done deal, ain't it? Right. That means that's what they want, ain't it? <laughs> but if you give me a little pencil and paper, then I might erase that, ain't it? But the Lord set this in stone with his own finger. You think he going to come and remove something or do away with something he did? The Lord don't do anything in vain, do he? Don't he say the word go forth and it proper, uh, all the, uh, prosper all that it will? The word that go forth out of his mouth, it don't come back to him void. But uh, let's move right along. Let's go and right on into the next chapter, Exodus 32, because I want y'all, I want us to see something. When Moses was up there getting the commandments, what was Israel doing? Because a lot of people out there in the world say, well, see, them Jews, you know, they couldn't keep the law. So they couldn't keep the law. That's why the Lord did away with it. They couldn't keep it. But we're going to see if that's the case. <laughs> Exodus 32 and pick it up in verse 1. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron. Oh, they got impatient. That's just like a, everything the Lord tell us to do, we do the opposite. He tell us to be patient, we don't be patient. He tell us to be temperate, our temples flare up. All these things. He tell us to be humble and we full of pride. And, we, and at that, we black and we proud. Don't even know what that be. But go ahead, bro. And said unto him, Up, make us gods, which shall go before us. For as for this, for as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we want not what has become of him. And ain't that crazy? He just gave him the Ten Commandments. And he told him, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And he told him, they told Aaron, Up and make us gods. They broke the first commandment. Man, go ahead. And Aaron said unto them, break off the golden earrings. And Aaron went wrong with it too. And see, this is a, this is a lesson for us teachers right here. Hey don't, hey, don't give in to the congregation. You see they contrary to the Lord. I don't care how many are against you. And then Lord say, one going to put a thousand to flight and two ten thousand to flight. And then he tell Ezekiel, don't be afraid before they face us. We got to stand in the gap for the Lord. And I'm looking at Aaron. I'd be like, man, Lord Jesus, be my strength. So I don't have to make this mistake. Go ahead. I'm just being honest with you, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. Break off the golden earrings, which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters. Uh-huh. And, and they did it. And they, and they did. And they broke them off. They broke off their golden earrings, and they gave to Aaron. Go ahead. Skip down to four, verse 4. And he received them at their hands. And fashioned it with a graving tool. Oh, and he fashioned it with a graving tool. Go ahead. And after he had made it a molten calf. After he had made it a molten calf. Go ahead. And they said, these be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Mm. And, and they, how is these the gods that brought you up out of the land of Egypt when you just pulled them out your ear? <laughs> See, because... This is how I know Israel crazy and why we uh, crazy and, and, and stupid enough to believe anything. Because he said my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Well, you're stupid enough to worship a golden cra uh, calf. So it's not hard to believe why we sitting up here worshiping two sticks across uh, now. And that's a Roman death sentence. Worship anything. The Lord said don't make no graven images of anything in likeness of heaven above or in the, in the earth or in the water under the earth. And they got... A, a graven image out of something that's in the water too, don't it? They got some out of the water. They got some off the earth. Then they try to make an image of him that's in heaven. And that's wrong. He said don't make no images, period. And then if you're going to make the image, you could at least do it wrong, right? But y'all, this is what this, is what <laughs> this love is all about. It's, keep, it's keeping the law. This is all for our own good. He tell us how he want us to treat him and how he want us to treat one another. But go ahead. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. Oh, then, he said, then he made a proclamation and said, tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. These ain't the feasts in, Deuteron I mean, in Leviticus 23, is it? <laughs> no, they ain't. I'm going to say tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. Oh, just up and all of a sudden, huh, after you make these gods. <laughs> That's crazy. Go ahead. And they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings 
And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. And he said, and they rose up early on the morrow and they offered burnt offerings and bought priest offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. And that's what and y'all know we do it. Let, 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 let one of these worldly holidays come up or these traditions come up. Everybody ready to turn up and, and cut a rug and shake it up and shake it down <laughs> and get their shimmy on, whatever else we like to say. You know, Israel, we are part of people and we've been a part of people from the beginning. But we better learn to rejoice and party for the right thing. The Lord Jesus Christ lead to learn to turn up on his Sabbath day, his feast days. Because even this is a feast day. Ain't we eating? Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord in Jesus' name. Let's move right along. Because it said they, 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 they did this idolatry. Right when Moses was up there getting the commandments. And they broke the first commandment. And then it said they rose up to play. They ate and they drank and they rose up to play. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 10. We're going to see who this was again. We're just clarifying this. Again, who it was that gave them these Ten Commandments written on these two tables of stone. Who it was that they were dealing with. And let's, we and we're going to see if he changed anything. Because if love is the fulfilling of the law, well, why would he come and do away with love? That's what you're saying when, he doing away, when, you, when you say he done away with the law. That means there ain't no love. That means there ain't no sin either. Because sin is the transgression of the law. So if ain't no more law, don't, don't ever let anybody hear a sinner come out your mouth again. Ain't nobody to condemn if it ain't no law. By knowledge of the law, we know what sin is. But 1 Corinthians 10 in verse 1. And we get there, my brother, go ahead. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant. He said, he said, I would not that you should be ignorant. He wants you to understand this. Go ahead. How that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Uh-huh. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and into the sea. Uh-huh. And did all eat the same spiritual meat. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. And they all ate the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink. Go ahead. For they drank of that spiritual rock. And they drank of that spiritual rock. Go ahead. That followed them. Mm -hmm. And that rock was Christ. And that rock was Christ. It don't get any clearer than that. This is the simplicity of Christ. So we don't be beguiled like Eve was by the subtility of the serpent in the garden. He said, and that rock was Christ. So it was Christ in the wilderness. It was Christ that gave Moses the law. He told, he said, search the scripture, they testify of me. He said, Moses wrote of me. What else do the Lord have to say to get us to believe him? The Lord say the same thing all over this Bible. He said, I, the Lord God, change not, that ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. And then he say, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Uh, let's move right to Matthew 22 now. We're going to see if the Lord changed anything. As a matter of fact, we're going to look at these two tables. We're going to look at the law on these two tables of testimony. <clears throat> the Lord is trying to sum this up. For us to make it as simple as possible so that we understand exactly what he his will is and do what he say. But Matthew 22 and pick it up at verse 35. Matthew 22 and 35. There are a couple of pages. When you get there, my brother, go ahead and read. Then one of them, which was a lawyer. Asked him, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Said, Master, which is the great commandment of the law? And you're going to always have some, somebody trying to catch you, catch you slipping. Hey, you say you Israel, and you say you are serving the God. They waiting on you to slip. They waiting on you to say something wrong. But he said, what is the great commandment of the law? But we, we, we keep it simple. Jesus going to keep it simple for him. Go ahead. Jesus said unto him, 
Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. And Jesus was, hey, he was speaking the word which he already had written. He is the word made flesh. These are the words of the Father. And every time Jesus said something, he, he said it is written. Or he quoting something that is written. And we're going to find that this is written. Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. That means with all your body. He said, and with all thy mind. Go ahead. This is the first and great commandment. This is the first and great commandment. So this is the first and great commandment. Because then he break the Ten Commandments down on two tables of testimony. Where he breaking the law down into two categories again. So let's look at this first and great commandment what Jesus quoted here. Let's go to Deuteronomy 10. Deuteronomy 10 and verse 12. Deuteronomy 10, and we're going to pick it up at verse 12. Go ahead and read. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? <laughs> and now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? That's a simple rhetorical question. Go ahead. He's going to tell you what he require of you. Go ahead. But to fear the Lord thy God, uh -huh. to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Ah, oh, so this is what the Lord is quoting here. Well, go, go ahead and read 13. To keep the commandments of the Lord. Oh, to keep the commandments of the Lord. Go ahead. And his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. For thy good. These commandments is for our good. Keeping the Lord's laws and statute commandments for our good. Doing what he say, do, giving him his due is for our good. Think about it, brothers and sisters. The Sabbath day. That's what the Lord gave us is a sign of his day of rest. That's the first resurrection. If you throw the Sabbath day away, you and threw away our salvation. Each bro. That's not love. This is God's love towards us. This is why we love him. This is why we love him with all our heart and all our mind and all our soul. This is the Lord's salvation to us. And we are do good to take heed. But let's move right along. Let's move right along. John 14. Lord telling us what to do for our own good so that we can live. Be a fair God. And you're going to let sin run rampant and, 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 and then not tell you what it is and then not tell you what you, what you need to do to get out of it. Be a fair God. They always, people always say life is a test. Well, he's giving us an open book test. How can you fail an open book test? But then, too, we is real. I have seen it in school. <laughs> but let's not do that with the Lord, right? Because him first. John 14, and we're going to pick it up at verse 15. Go ahead, my brother. If ye love me, keep my commandments. That's simple, ain't it? Yeah. If ye love me, keep my commandments. This is what Jesus is saying. The words in red, ain't it? They in red in y'all Bible? Yes, sir. He said, if ye love me, keep my commandments. And we see that he is the one that gave these commandments from the beginning. This is what we have to do if we say we love the Lord. You can't just say you love the Lord and then don't do nothing he say. Hey, what, what we always say? Actions speak louder than words. Yeah, I hear you talking, but you ain't showing me no love. But let's skip down to verse 21. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them. He that hath my commandments and keep them. He it is that loveth me. He it is that loveth me. And, and, he, and that go for any of us. If we have the Lord's commandments and we keep them, then we love him. But go ahead. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. And you will 
Learn who the Lord is. The Lord will continue to ma manifest himself to you, lead you and guide you into all truth. But you have to keep the commandments. The commandments is a prerequisite for obtaining this gift, for obtaining this love. If you, because let, let's, let's let the Bible speak. We're going to go back to Proverbs 8. Because he said, if ye love me, keep my commandments. But what if you don't keep his commandments? What if you don't keep his commandments? Because he said, he that have my commandments and keep it them, he it is that loveth me. And, I, and, and, and he will be loved to my father, and I will love him. But if you don't keep them commandments, let's see. They go for any of us. Proverbs 8 and 17. See here a few more pages. I want all of us to see this. Proverbs 8 and 17. When you get there, my brother, go ahead and read. I love them that love me. I love them that love me. I don't need to interpret that, do it? Yes, sir. The Lord said he loved them that love him. So if you don't love them, do you love you? That's a question we got to ask ourselves, ain't it? Skip down to verse 36. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. Oh, because if you sinned against the Lord, yeah, you wrong your own soul. You don't love him. Go ahead. All they that hate me love oh, death. Also, you can hate the Lord. Yes. So if you don't keep his commands, the Lord said that's hate to him. And if you hate him, he said you love death. And see, this is even... Love, this is, man, ain't no perfect love. The, the books say God is love. And this love is perfect. He even teach you, and even teaching you how to love yourself. Because if you don't love the Lord, and you don't love your neighbors yourself, then you don't love yourself. You know why? Because you don't love yourself enough to live forever. When that's what the Lord wants for you. This was his purpose, to create God, being just like him. But let's move right along to eight, uh, Romans 8. Because people say, well, well, you know, as long as you believe in the Lord, you know, as long as you believe in him and love him, ain't no condemnation in Jesus. Ain't no con We're going to go and read it. We're going to go and read it. Romans chapter 8. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Romans 8 and verse 1. Because we got, we got to clarify all this stuff, all these statements that people make. And even what we say, even what we preach, we have to make full proof of our ministry. And we know how to do that because the Lord gave us instruction on how to do that. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But let's go ahead and read 8 and 1. Romans 8 and 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. And that's true. I agree with that. If you are in Christ Jesus, there is no condemnation. But let's look at this. Go ahead. Who walk not after the flesh. Oh, who walk not after the flesh. Go ahead. But after the spirit. But after the spirit. And let's look at what this flesh and what this spirit is. Skip down to, skip down to verse, uh, verse 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity, enmity against God. The carnal mind is, is enmity against God, or the fleshly mind is hateful against God. That's what the enmity is. It hates God. The carnal mind is hateful towards God. Go ahead. For it is not subject to the law of God. Oh, for it is not subject to the law of God. Go ahead. Neither indeed can be. Neither indeed can be. Go ahead. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Ah, oh, so then there's much condemnation then if you don't walk in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if you're not walking in him, then it's because you don't believe. And there is condemnation. You are not doing the things that he asks. But let's move right along. Let's, let's clarify this some more. Let's go to 1 John 2. First John two. 
and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. First John 2 and verse 1. And when you get there, my brother, go ahead. My little children, these things write unto you that ye sin not. Oh, he said, these things write unto you that ye sin not. Not, not, not that you sin so you can fall into gr- grace like that, uh, like that pimp say. Y'all know his uh, name, Dollar. <laughs> He said, do we, do, we, do we make void the law that grace shall abound? What did Paul say? God, God forbid. forbid. <laughs> Somebody ought to read that to him. But he said, my little children, these things write out unto you that ye sin not. Go ahead. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Because he said even a just man follows seven times, brother. But you got to get back. You can't stay in sin. You got to get up. Repent and do what the Lord say. We die daily. Go ahead. Jesus Christ, the righteous. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Go ahead. And he is the propitiation for our sins. Uh Uh-huh, and he he did become the payment for our sins. Go ahead. And not for ours only. And not for Israel's only. Go ahead. But also for the sins of the whole world. How many times the Lord got to say that? This word is simple right here. But go ahead. And hereby we do know that we know him. And hereby we do know that we know him if we do what? Keep his commandments. If we keep his commandments. I did not write this. The Lord wrote this. This is how we know him. Go ahead. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments. So if you run into these type of people, oh, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. I know the Lord. I know he my God and light and all this. But if they ain't keeping no commandments, what is it? Go ahead. A liar. And the truth. Is a liar. Go ahead. And the truth is not in him. And the truth is not in him. I don't care what they try to say to you, brothers and sisters. You know they are coming to you with lies. If somebody come to you telling you, you don't have to keep the law. Because what they just told you is, oh, you don't have to love me. And then that's when you get, get to asking the questions. Well, can I sleep with your wife? Can I steal from you then? Can I cover what you got? Can I bear f- false witness on you? That's the law. The law said thou shalt not, right? So you can't say that you know the Lord and you ain't keeping his commandments. That go for any of us. That is absolute for any of us. If we say we know the Lord, we got to be obedient. Thank you.